Wildy Cats, Rhododendron Blooms Bigger in My Head. Hey, it's me, Cisco Morris, and here's what's coming up on Gardening with Cisco. Some flowers will help your veggies grow. We'll show you what types work well for companion planting. It's tomato growing time. We'll show you what to do with seedlings to get big, beautiful, organic tomatoes like the pros. We're using apricots to make a delicious dessert that you usually buy in a bakery. And this tropical plant pick will add a punch to any garden. All this and a roadie lover's paradise on the east side. Coming up on Gardening with Cisco. I'm Cisco Moore. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. We're in Kirkland today at this neighborhood nursery that folks drive by all the time, might not even know it's here, but look inside. It is exploding with color. Oh, man. Griswold Nursery is a family-run nursery. Bill Griswold started this in 1952. He wanted wow. to share his roadie habit with the nice. public, you know. <laughs> We're going to show you a lot of rhododendrons and azaleas with great blooms. But right now, we got to look at the vegetable garden for blooms. Blooms in the vegetable garden? I know. I thought he was crazy, too, when he first suggested it. But really, some flowers can help your vegetables thrive. All these beautiful flowers, there is nothing like. Are you doing a cutting garden? Is that uh, what you want? No, no, no. I'm putting them in the veggie garden. People should do this. In your Be vegetable garden? Yes, because it attracts the bees to pollinate. Oh. It's a big problem now. Nobody gets any bees. Your your uh, zucchinis yeah. get this big, they rot and fall off. It's because they're not getting pollinated. They're not getting pollinated. Oh, so by interesting. Adding a bunch, and I picked all flowers, single flowers, you know that have lots of stamens so that uh, there's lots to feed the bees. I left this big wide space. Okay. It almost killed me not I plant bet. any veggies there. You know, that's an awful good spot for Brussels sprouts. <laughs> okay, and uh, again, some good organic fertilizer. Okay, okay. And you know, hummingbirds love these too. Cosmos. Okay, so I, I want know. a white guy. Oh, okay. What's that guy? Ah, that's a Cosmos. Oh. Where is that guy? There he is. I think him right in the middle of the yeah. buzz. That would and, be cute. Yeah, you know, and, uh, and this is a blue um, salvia. Oh. It's an annual. Real? Oh, yeah, nice. And, and, you know, uh, bees love blue. Now, um, these flowers, these would be, would do all these make decent cutting flowers? Could we do that if we wanted sure. to? Sure. They yeah. all make good cut flowers, okay. yeah. And, uh, now, oh, they smell good, too. Uh, now you're smelling this. Oh, the alyssum. Ah. Oh, but that baby spreads everywhere. You're right. I'll never be rid of it. I may, I may really regret it's, planting this, but the, I the only love thing, smelling it so much. And is it edible? Because if it were uh, edible, it wouldn't matter uh, in no, your vegetable I, garden. I, I don't I doubt think it. it's edible, unfortunately. But, you know, it'll, it'll be nice right up in the front where it can just... Uh, kind of reseed if it wants and I'll always get the smell that honey smell you know they've got uh, they're coming out with these new uh, alyssums that um, they bloom a lot longer than they used to ah, too which okay. is awful nice look at how cute this is Isn't so just go out, find your single flowers with lots of pollen for the bees because yep. we want the bees to come pollinate all the rest of your fruits and vegetables that you have going on yeah, here look at how pretty nice. this is gonna be what a great idea I love flowers the vegetables are nice to have, but the flowers are just so pretty. I know. You need a little of everything, you know. That's the key. Go get yourself some flowers. So there's some bloom and veggie combinations that don't work so What's well. What's that? Sunflowers and potatoes hate each other. Oh, really? That's, oh, That's yeah. Funny. And don't stick fennel with tomatoes. They just don't get along. Funny, because they taste really good together. Yeah. Oh. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Griswold's Nursery in the Bridal Trails neighborhood of Kirkland. Check out wow. this Arthur Bedford rhododendron. Whoa, is that pretty? 
I love the color. It's so intense. Yeah. Well, you know what? I am so bad. I don't have my tomatoes in the ground yet. Oh, la, la. So if I'm going to do that, I need to go buy some starts, don't I? Yeah. Well, we have some great tips on what to look for and what you need to do to ensure you get the ripest, juiciest, fattest, most gorgeous tomatoes on earth. Really, truly. You're making me hungry. I know. Tomatoes are the most popular plant grown by home gardeners, and nothing in the garden is more fussed over. I don't think there's a veggie garden that doesn't have tomatoes. What you add to the soil when you plant your starts can make that first bite pay off with more than just delicious taste. Organic tomatoes can be loaded with nutrition. And I don't know how much people know about how good tomatoes are for you. It is one of the richest sources of lycopene that you can that you can eat and lycopene is known as a cancer cell inhibitor commercial growers like sunny farms in squim washington are using hendricus organics organo bloom fertilizer to grow tomato starts for their retail nursery i guess what we notice the most is how vibrant the plant is yeah. itself i mean yeah. nice lush green um, so when were these planted these guys were started as seedlings about three, four weeks ago, I believe. <laughs> well, this is my hand. This is the size. Three, four weeks. That's right. pretty good. Calls start coming in as early as January for these lush organic starts. They have a cult following in the Dungeness Valley. Once upon a time, it was like everybody um, would compare these conventionally or synthetically raised tomatoes and say, well, they're bigger, they're better, you know. Yeah. And now our plants are healthier and more vibrant. I mean, you can't, there is none of that talk of bigger or better. You know, it's the, the organic approach is far succeeded. But what you're actually tasting is that nutrition, high nutritional organics. It's not just organics, it's high nutritional right. organics. Because all those minerals, everything that that plant takes up, goes into your body. Here's how to take your tomatoes from organic to high nutrition organic. For most people start tomatoes from starts that you're going to buy at a store. What you see here are two different tomato plants that are in the same size pot. But if I was going to get one of these, I would get this one and not the longer, lankier one. Tomatoes want the warmest, sunniest spot you've got. In this case, a greenhouse. And they demand great soil with great nutrition. This is my really yummy, very mature, rich, dark, smells great, plants love it, compost. So before I plant, I'm gonna add a little bit of compost into this area. Now, personally, I like to get my hands in the dirt rather than using something mechanized. Tina adds start right so the roots will find nutrition after the transplant. Can't use too much, you're just gonna waste it. So it doesn't take very much. There we go. Then adds fertilizer meant for tomatoes. Tomatoes love organo bloom and organo bloom loves tomatoes. As I said it's low nitrogen but full of other really good ingredients. Always work the fertilizer into the top inch of your soil. Then she mixes a cocktail for her transplant. What we have here is our wonderful humagic liquid, which is going to provide a lot of the humate activity, the fulvic acid and the humic acid, into this wonderful mix of microbes and good soil um, to help this plant really get a good start now that it's been planted into its final home. This tomato's rich diet is taken care of, but it needs plenty of water as well. And if you think all this tender loving care for a mere tomato is ridiculous, just remember, treat your tomatoes well and they'll treat you well. Plus, your neighbors will envy the living tweet a lot of you, or at least wonder what the heck you're up to. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Griswold Nursery here in Kirkland. You know, Cisco, I finally got to step into the kitchen with Lynn, Via, and man, did we cook up something? 
totally worth showing off. Okay, rub it <laughs> in. What'd you cook? It was baklava with apricot syrup drizzled over the top. And I gotta tell you, I was so intimidated by it in the beginning because there's a lot of work, but Lynn showed me, of course, pretty easy. Where's mine? We're gonna kick off the stone fruit season with really an ancient recipe. Oh yeah, it's How very about good. that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Gorgeous apricots. Apricots. Oh. And, you know, I do a million different things with apricots, and this truly is one of my favorite things to do. So well, baklava. Baklava. Yeah, kind it. of a little version of now, it. Now you know, you get it with all these millions of layers in it, and it's delicate, and it must be difficult to do. We're gonna totally simplify the process. Okay. okay. But first of all, we're gonna make sort of a nice little scented, spice scented honey syrup Ooh. that was gonna be a bath for the apricots. So let's let's put that together. Love it. Okay. Okay, so I um, will bring we'll you a little put it all in. Pan here. So we have a little honey. Honey. About okay. a half a cup of honey. Combinations of honey and cinnamon and fruits. Ooh. So a little lemon juice. Gorgeous. Just doesn't matter what yeah. order. Orange juice. Orange juice. Orange zest. Of course. You can a put a little gramine in here if you like. Oh. That'd yes. Good. And then I crushed some cinnamon sticks. So you're just going to okay. put that in. You don't want to put ground cinnamon in this dish. Okay. You want to just boil that in. And then we're going to put that on about eight to ten minutes till it oh, boils down yum. to a syrup. I know. Can you smell it already? That could be a syrup on it. I know. Exactly. Okay. So while that's reducing, we'll put our uh, baklava together. Nice. Okay. And filo dough? And filo dough. Okay. So um, you haven't worked with filo before? I never have. Isn't that fun? No, All right, I let can't. me show you. This is a super, super important trick. Okay. What filo is, is very, very super thin layers of dough. Okay. okay. Super thin. Wow. And they dry really quickly. Uh -huh. So after you take them out of the box, put a layer of plastic on top and then a nice damp towel to hold the plastic down. Okay. Is it warm okay. or no? Just no, damp. just like that. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to roll that back. And here's the best part about filo. Zip it the, the phyllo dough does not have any fat in it at all. Okay. So the butter is a very important part of making it a nice tender dough. Okay. So what you're going to do is just p uh, pick up a sheet here and layer it in your pan. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer up five uh, sheets. And you want to make sure that you get a nice even coating of butter all the way across. So and off we okay. go. So we're going to do okay. uh, five layers here. Okay, so there's number five. Yeah, okay, so there's number five. And, and now you're going to put about a, you know, a, a big fat handful of that and all over the is, surface. And this is, looks okay. like pistachios? And so what this is, it's, this is a combination of pistachios, almonds, Ooh. cinnamon, clove, and, and granulated sugar. And then we go back beautiful? again? And then we start over with the filo. Okay, you ready? let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You put her down and I'll butter Alrighty. up. What a team. Alrighty, Fun. Good. I like forgiving filo. So, number five once again, yeah. and off to the okay, races exactly. with the nuts. And you can go pretty I generous on this. this layer. I know. So for the last three or four layers, because okay. those are the only ones that you want to kind of have them look a little right. nice, then what I do is I usually, I kind of go in and trim it up to approximately oh, the size of the easier. pan. And last, but go, not least, like, is this number let's five? Do, I think this is four. Okay. Let's do one more. Yeah. And then I want to show you a, a cool little trick. Whenever you're... Um, working with phyllo and you're, you're doing it sort of in a casserole style like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to score it into serving size pizzas prior to baking it. Oh. Because it gets so crispy right. when you bake it, right? Okay, so give me one last layer of butter and then I'll show you how we're going to score that up. So the key is to at least get scored through that first layer, but if you right. can get all the way to the bottom. It'll good. help you in yeah, the end, exactly. so why not? Exactly. Okay, so where that just goes in the oven for about 40 minutes or so, and then we do yeah. step step three. Okay, ready? Yeah, baby. The smell of this has been killing oh, me. Look at there are those little pieces right there. Yeah, there's, yes. that's got your name on it. it does. So while it's still sizzling hot yes. right out of yes. the oven, we're going to take our syrup and we fold it in about eight fresh, gorgeous organic apricots. No. And you don't need a spoon. Just so I'm going to this you're gonna poor pour baby. It over. Yeah, poor baby. And what pour. this is going to do? This syrup has been cooked down, so it's going to get sticky, and all these apricots are just going to all that juice is going to soak into the I got to get the ends. There's nothing like a dry corner. Yeah. 
And then we're gonna um, let this cool for probably two hours. And then we're gonna dish it out. And I don't can... have that long. <laughs> I think Cisco. <laughs> Cisco, I never thought I could make it myself. I always thought you had to go to a specialty bakery, but it was awesome. So what I want to know is where is mine? Well, you never bring any for me, but uh, me uh, being the kind uh, of person I am, oh, there no, you are, no. my friend. It was so hot, she wouldn't let me eat any, so we actually had to bring some. Oh. So oh. here you are. You are a wonderful person. I am, aren't I? Mm. Unlike my friend here. Oh, and here's that little bit that really doesn't count. Remember mm. that one? Oh. Mm. Not bad. Mm. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Griswold's Nursery in Kirkland. All this color reminds me of our plant pick this Really? Week. Ooh, what it's is a it? tropical treasure, even though most people grow it as an annual. Yeah, but you stick it in your garage and overwinter right. it. Right, Bengal mm. Tiger Canna. Oh la la. Now it's time to pull it out. So this is Cisco's canna. I don't know about you, but my canna is coming back, both the lighter color and the dark purple one, but it's only about that. Big in the ground uh, yeah. right now because it's been so cold. That's it. So this might not even have survived here if I'd have left it out because it's not a very hardy variety, right. Bengal tiger here. Now it's time to go back into the garden. It's got enough size. It's got a, off to a good start. So I think Cisco's going to show me how this one works. I hope. I hope I am. <laughs> Notice how I said Cisco's going to show me how oh, this one la, works. La. So what okay. are you going to do? Oh, well, you, yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to try to just, let's see if I can just Find cram it through here. Hayaku! Ooh. Yeah, you gotta watch out here. Okay. All right. Oh, man. I'm getting there. Oh, oh yeah, that's the sound I like. That is good. So, and you try not to skewer them beyond repair. Right, yeah. Oh, you know, look at I'm that. gonna do some damage, but not right. too much. Right. Oh, okay. la la. Okay, now we still gotta get this out of here somehow. <laughs> there we go. Definitely a two-person job. Yeah. Boy. And there you go. Voila. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Man, oh man. So here are the stalks or whatever, the roots. Yep. Yeah, I whatever chopped you through call a few those. Them, but you yeah. know what? They recover really quick from that. Yeah, they do. And they, as long as they're going to come back, and we just need some warm weather now for yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, Megan, I got the coolest place to put this. Okay, let's go. All right, go. here we go. Hope it's not too heavy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> right there, Megan. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You even knew. Yeah, I got a special spot picked out for that. How's that look? Well, I'd say that's just about perfect. What do you oh, say? Boy. I think this guy's probably not going to oh, make no, it. No, that guy's had it. Here we go. Oh, man. Uh, so lots of fertilizer I to get put, this baby I going. I put a ton of organic fertilizer in here with a little bit of high end, little high nitrogen first number, because I want this to grow fast. This is a real showpiece. So look at that. That is going to be absolutely gorgeous in no time. And beautiful. you're about two months ahead of me. Yeah. Already in growth. Yeah, <laughs> see, it was worth doing it this yeah. way, even though it was a pain in the neck having it the garage all right. winter long. Right. Well, look <laughs> at that. I'm excited for you. Well, it's So I you can too. winter them. It just takes a little extra care and then all of a sudden you probably have three or four more plants over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm already trying to figure out where I'm going to put them. I'll take one with me. Oh, la, la. Bengal tiger has bright orange flowers in the middle of summer. Nice. If you see it, you can't help but break into a rumba. I know, you and your salsa, but before you start shaking that booty, we caught up with the sisters who own this 60-year-old beautiful rhododendron nursery to learn a little bit more. Look at this one's coming out. Very fragrant. I like rhodes because of color. There's so many different colors, sizes and shapes of the flower blooms. And the foliage just, yeah. and the plants. And every year, to me is an exciting year because they always change just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just I like to see them start, I like to see them bloom, I like to see the flowers and I deadhead them. Then they look nice again. Then they go into the winter with the flower bud and you look and watch that till it's ready to come out again. And I just enjoy most of it. I like to collect. We're selling the roadies. The big ones are $26 and then they go down. There's some real tiny ones out there. They're probably about 10 
and so then the range would be between 10 and 26. And most of them are, you've got a range of 30, 36 inches across would be the $26. Yeah, it's gonna be sad leaving here. Griswold's Nursery is open Monday through Friday and even on the weekends during the season. And what a great place to learn about our state flower, the rhododendron. No doubt. You know what? I also hear they have azaleas here. Some of them are fragrant. I think we should go find some. Yeah, let's go find that baklava. That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh, la, la. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend. Baklava.